Hey, I'm Matthew Moskoviak from CNET, and today we're going to take a look at the TIAC AH01. This is a compact stereo integrated amplifier that's currently selling for around $450. The TIAC is a good looking amp in a small package with a brush metal front and a plastic cabinet. Compared to a full size AV receiver, the front panel is dead simple with just a volume knob, a headphone jack, source selector, and a power button. While it's not quite as small as the New Force Dia or quite as pretty as the Peachtree Audio Deco 65, the TIAC strikes a good balance between the two and it's certainly going to look nice in your TV cabinet. The included remote isn't nearly as nice. It has the annoying bubble-like buttons that are usually found on cheaper devices, and they just don't respond consistently to button presses, so you're left hitting some buttons over and over again. You'll also notice that there's no power button on the remote, so the only way to turn it on and off is via the front panel button. That means if you're using it in your living room with the universal remote, you'll probably want to leave the TI powered on, which isn't ideal. There are four inputs on the back. Two digital audio inputs, including one optical and one coaxial, and two stereo analog inputs. What's neat about the optical input is that it makes it easy to use the TIAC as an AV receiver replacement at a much, much smaller size. Just connect all your HDMI sources to your TV, then connect the TV's optical audio output to the TIAC, and the TIAC will be able to amplify all your living room devices, as long as you're okay sticking with stereo sound. Another perk is that the AH01 has a dedicated subwoofer output, which is lacking on many of its competitors. While you can often still use a subwoofer with those other amps using speaker level inputs, the dedicated output is more convenient and leads to less wire clutter. There's also a USB port on the back that you can connect directly to a computer, which not only lets you play back your MP3 collection, but also allows you to play back high resolution audio files as long as you have the right software. What you won't find on the AH01 is any kind of wireless capability, such as Wi-Fi, AirPlay, or Bluetooth. That's not a huge loss, as you can always add that later with an Apple TV or a Bluetooth receiver, although it's worth pointing out that the excellent NAD D3020 has Bluetooth built in for about the same price. With a compact amp like this, a lot of people might be skeptical about how it sounds, but we found it to have excellent sound quality. Resident audiophile Steve Guttenberg gave it a listen with a wide range of speakers, from Pioneer's budget SPFS 52 tower speakers to PSB's Image T6s, and the TX sounded excellent no matter what we matched it up with. There's also no reason to worry about power with the little amp, as the AH01 got plenty loud in our medium-sized room with all the speakers we tested. Steve even compared the TIAC paired up with Pioneer's tower speakers to the similarly priced Harman Kardon soundbar, and as you'd expect, the separate speakers sounded much better, especially with music. So if you're looking for a simple soundbar alternative that performs a lot better, the TIAC AH01 can deliver with affordable speakers. The big question to ask yourself is whether it's worth getting the TIAC versus some of the stiff competition. Sony's STR-DN840 is a full-size AV receiver, it costs about the same but supports 7.2 channels, has 6 HDMI inputs, and built-in AirPlay, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. If you don't mind the size, it's hard to argue that it's not a better value for living room use. If you want to stick with the smaller integrated amp, NAD's D3020 is a little more expensive, but I'd say it's worth the extra cost with a nicer remote, sleeker design, and built-in Bluetooth. So altogether, while we really liked a lot of what the TIAC had to offer, it has a few flaws that keep it from being as recommendable as a similar NAD D3020. I'm Matthew Moskoviak, and this is the TIAC AH01.